Hey everybody, this is Rob Dukes. Welcome to the Put Up Your Dukes podcast. Uh, I decided to do a podcast because I figured, you know, not a lot of people do podcasts. There's not a lot of them out there to choose from. I figure I'd get in the game real early and, uh, you know, it was like me and like maybe like 10 other people. So you'll be able to, you know, have something to listen to while you're at work, uh, fucking off at your job and wasting time. Anyway, you can find me here on all your podcast places, Spotify and YouTube. Uh, if you can, go to the YouTube link and click it and uh, subscribe and like it and all the other bullshit. You know the deal, man. It's trying to get something going so people uh, have a... You can come here and, and listen to a conversation I'm going to have with one of my friends. Um, so I was in Exodus for 10 years. I'm a professional musician. I did my 10,000 hours. And... Uh, you know, I'm in a band called Generation Kill, working on new stuff. Uh, the album's done. Actually, no, the album's not done. That's a lie. Um, I basically uh, found one of the songs. We, we had this song that we did, and I, I found myself just, uh, I listened to it over and over and over again, and I'm like, oh, man, this, there's just something, I just, I suck. I just don't like it. The band was great. I just, uh, I hated myself. On it, so uh, I um, I had my guitar player Jason uh, trying to rearrange it a little bit, and then I wrote new lyrics and just started over from scratch. Like I hadn't heard the song before, and now it's one of my favorites on the record. Uh, anyway, the record's called MK Ultra. It comes out January twenty fourth. Uh, you can also go listen to me on Exodus and stuff, and listen to my old records. The reason I'm doing a podcast is because I've been to uh, I've, I've traveled all over the world, and I know a lot of people uh, in the industry, outside the industry, on the fringe of the industry. Um, uh, I have a bunch of friends that are guitar techs and drum techs and tour managers and, and people that are on the inside of all this, and I'm going to invite these people on and just have conversations with them and tell stories and, and talk about, you know, uh, you know, getting sharpied because they got too drunk and passed out on our bus or whatever they, you know, whatever happened on tour along the lines of, uh, of being on a, on a, in a heavy metal band and, and, and hanging on a tour bus with us. Um, today's November 1st. No, today's not, today's November 20th. Today's actually November 22nd. Oh, it is. Oh, today's November 22nd. I've been informed. I thought it was a 20th. Uh, JFK was killed today. It's kind of weird that all those people in Dealey Plaza, they're all kind of hanging out. It's like 200 people waiting for him and his son to come back. Then they were supposed to go to a Stones concert. I don't know what the... F I don't care that much. I just know that I find it really uh, interesting that they're, they're, they're wearing red hats and, and, and have, uh, you know, Trump flags, but they're wanting the most liberal fucking president that ever existed to fucking come back into... Uh, uh, existence and lead them to the Holy Land or whatever the fuck. Dude. I don't know, man. Whatever. People are fucking weird. And I'm one of them. So, you know. And you know what's really fucking cool is that, like, none of this is going to fucking matter when the sun explodes. Because everything we do, all the music, all the art, the fucking Mona Lisa, the fucking Eiffel Tower, Statue of Liberty, the American flag, all that shit's going to just be dust. It's going to be dust and no one's going to fucking, no one's going to be like, oh, remember that planet? No, there's no one out there. Or maybe there is. I really oh, fucking hope there is. I hope we're like, I hope we're like a reality show. Like, like we're the trailer park that they have cameras on and they're watching us and they are just fucking giggling at what a fucking, fucking nightmare we've become. Anyway, oh, I don't want to speak ill of the dead. Uh, but JFK, he created the cigar embargo of no Cubans, right? But before he did that, he bought like a thousand of them, filled his humidor with them, and then changed the law so no one else could have any. And that's kind of a cunt move, especially coming from a cigar smoker. And I actually like Kennedy. I, you know, I don't know too much about things. Uh, I'm a hypocrite completely. I will, I will give you shit for something I just figured out like an hour ago. You know, for not knowing it. Like, you know, I'm that douche. Um, anyway, I smoke cigars. It's, it's one of my favorite things to do in the world. I hang out at this place, which is my sponsor of this podcast, is the Yard Cigar Bar in Chandler, Arizona. I'm there a lot. I hang out there. I smoke cigars. I watch hockey. 
Oh, speaking of hockey, did you see the fucking Ranger game? How about them fucking New York Rangers, right? Uh, New York Rangers won with less than a second to go, won a tie game. It was fucking unbelievable. I've seen it twice in my life where the rain, Brad Richards did it in like 2011, and then Ryan Lindgren did it yesterday. 0.07 seconds to go. He scores a fucking goal and wins a tie fucking game, and uh, it was fucking awesome. I didn't cry. I usually cry at shit like that, but I didn't cry at that one. Uh, I did cry when they won the Stanley Cup. That did bring, like, man tears. Like, like uh, what kind of tears? Like, um, that, that scene in Goodwill Hunting, it's not your fault. Yeah, I know. That scene, dude, that crushes me every fucking time. All right. Uh, anyway, so my first guest is Mr. Rick Hunall. He's awesome. Legendary guitar player for Exodus, heralded as one of the um, the creators of Thrash, uh, Bonded by Blood. He he played on that record, and by even by everyone's standard, even by everyone's standards, like Hetfield and and all the guys in Slayer, all the people, all those agree that the Exodus album, even though it came out a couple years after everyone else, was was the pinnacle of Thrash because they had been playing. With, with, with those guys from the beginning so they had all heard it live a million times and was like oh this is fucking record is so um anyway uh i had a, a, an amazing conversation with uh, rick Hunel. also at the end uh we talked about i asked him his favorite songs and i made a list and at the end of this podcast if you let it play I'm gonna make you're gonna, those songs are just gonna be added to this podcast. So if you're listening on like Apple Podcasts or Spotify, it's just gonna begin. If you're on YouTube, it's not gonna play because of you know why the music rights and all this stuff. So, but as part of this podcast at the end, you're gonna hear a list of uh, Rick's favorite songs, and then I mixed in my favorite songs that Rick played on that that I love of his music, and uh, so it's it's about 15 or 16 songs. Um, that'll they'll play after this podcast. So, anyway, man, um, if you can go to YouTube and click uh, subscribe and like on there, or I don't care about the likes, just subscribe to it. So, uh, what that does, it enables me to just keep doing more and more and more of these, which is what I want to do. So, I have a ton of guests lined up, people that are interesting to me, artists, musicians, uh, painters. I'm gonna have like a, just a, a plethora of people that um, that I want to have conversation with that I find interesting. And uh, and that's it. So, welcome to the Put Up Your Dukes podcast. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. And have a good day. There he is. Hey, look at you. <laughs> Hi, Robert. I just want to tug on your little beard right there. <laughs> What's up, Bubba? What's up, man? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Hey, I just wanted to start off this little podcast saying that I love you so much, Rob. Mm. Oh man, the Stogie. Yeah. <laughs> so, I want you to know that I love you too, Rick. I really do. So, uh, are so you are you on your deck right now? I'm on my little porch. I got I'm on my condo. I'm sitting on my porch. I'm smoking a cigar, drinking coffee. Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah. Wait, wait, wait. There you go. Cheers. <laughs> so let me first ask you, man. How you feeling? How are you? I'm good, man. I'm just uh. Just finished my season, uh, hanging out with the kids. Yeah, my my youngest son um, has got one more year. He's a senior now, so I'm getting him out of high school. Seriously thinking about moving out of California, bro. Where are you going to move? I don't know, man. Uh, somewhere where I don't pay $5.25 a gallon for gas, bro. Yeah, we're, we're about 4 bucks, but... You know, Are you it, really? it, yeah, man, it's, you know, it, it fucking comes and goes, man. It goes up. I remember when I remember like, I remember at one point, man, in New York, when I was living there, it was like six bucks a gallon, dude. You know what yeah. I mean? I, mean I, I remember people freaking out, but it wasn't like, you know, it just passed and it went, then it, you know, went back down to $3 and it goes up and it goes down. Yeah, and, I hope, I hope, I hope it know. does go back because it's fucking, it's pretty brutal out here, man. Yeah, inflation is 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 real. The struggle is real, bro. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I'm really just hoping that the sun will explode. I mean, that that'd be kind of well. That's what's going to happen. The CME, <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> the 
Coronal mass ejection? Absolutely. Have you thought about like Colorado? Have you thought about Arizona, New Mexico? I about Arizona. I'm thinking about like, uh, I have some farmer friends up in up in uh, up in Oregon right now. All the cannabis laws are way better than they are here. I just I want to get my kids my kid out of high school and then we'll see what happens. Yeah, man. You know what? You know you you do well. You do Midtown Manhattan. Yeah, Fifty Sixth Street. You know what I mean? <laughs> like right around there. Not me. <laughs> that fucking place, man. I mean, hey, I might as well move to the Tenderloin in San Francisco. <laughs> Fuck, dude. As Dave Chappelle says, there ain't nothing tender about that motherfucker at all. No, dude. I hey. was just there, dude. I was just there. It's really bad. But it's, it wasn't as bad as it was a couple years ago, which I found really strange. It's, it's actually sad, to tell you the truth. Yeah. So I'm going to be going to Oakland for the first time in like a year for the uh, for the Testament Exodus show uh, at the yeah. Fox. Yeah. Kind of looking forward to that, man, but I'm not I'm not too stoked about bringing my truck down there and having somebody steal my Cadillac cover. <laughs> yeah, that's they've been you know doing I mean? to, uh, yeah, they do that to um I think uh, what was it the uh the fucking Prius the the Cadillac converter is worth like 3 grand and people are just ripping them out of cars. Dude, yeah. it's it's like epidemic out here, but yeah, uh, I was just there in Oakland. I was just there. Matter of fact, uh I was going to come see you but I ran out of time, so I'm going to come back and do that again. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Soon. So you had a good time with Tom, yeah? Yeah, man. I went down. So I had dinner with Tom and Ursula. And then uh the next night we went to Ursula's birthday party. And then uh and then I came home. So it was good, man. I hung out with Tom. I got Tom to smoke a cigar with me and fucking yeah, so you know, it was it wasn't was that crazy rainstorm, so it was kind of cool. And we just had a it was a really nice, uh, it was a good time, man. We had some good, deep, meaningful conversations, you know, as we always oh, yeah. have. Tom is the best, dude. He he uh, yeah. he dodged a bullet, bro. Fucking a, he did. Yeah. Wow. And he and he has like a he has that um that positive mental attitude that just dude, from, since fucking, day one, Rob. I've been fucking, there since day one. I've been driving back and forth to Almanor from where I live. It's like three hours each way. Yeah, just to go hang out with him um and support him. And since day one, since the second he found out, it's just been the, the most positive fuck. I, I I don't know, man. He's yeah, just, it's, it's it's inspiring. It really is, it is. man. Yeah, no, it is. He, he's, yeah. he's a badass. Yeah, speaking of badasses, I want to talk about you. Oh, stop! Um, when I first met you, I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna enlighten you because you might not remember. I remember all of it, but do you? Oh yeah. Uh we had the best fucking time on tour when I yeah. first met you. We were having a blast, dude. You were doing for guitars for Gary, right? Yeah, well, you. I was doing guitar, so you, Gary, yeah. and Jack. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, we just had a great time, man. We laughed. Remember on the bus, you'd put on your music, dude? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I'd play like, like a... a man, Rob, you're badass, dude. You <laughs> fucking shred. <laughs> man, you sing, you play guitar, you write these songs. That's fucking badass, Rob. Remember? Yeah, I do. I remember, yeah. Yeah, yeah we uh, love that shit, dude. Yeah, man. And then, uh, you know, so then, you know, uh, that led to... to like I, I wasn't there for the, the conversations that led after the tour, but I, I know that eventually I got a call from Gary and said, Hey man, come fucking come audition. Yeah. Uh, so that, unfortunately that was right when I was, I was on my way out. You know what I mean? Well, before okay. we get there. So you were there for the demo. You made the demo. Yeah. You, you showed up. We made the demo for nuclear blast so they could hear me sing. We did it with Tilo yeah. and, uh, and they really liked it. And I have oh, yeah. to say, so I have to say that, you know, you were uh, my biggest fan in that room. You were. Uh, that's, a, that's absolutely right. You, you. Uh, Rob, I, I just, I still to this day, I adore you. And I, look. <laughs> well, here's the deal, right? So, so I actually sat down with those guys last night. They're here making a video. And I went and hung out with Lee and Gary and Tom and, uh, and, and Zet last night. Um, oh, they're in, they're in Arizona doing a video? Yeah, they're, in the, they're here doing a video. So we hung out last night. So basically what the deal was is we talked about, well, my band Generation Kill could open for Exodus, and then I could jump up and sing a couple songs, right? Yeah. And, 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 uh, and then we could bring Rick along, I, too. Uh, how many times I've actually I, – I, dude, I'm, I'm really in touch with the fans on Facebook, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And I know – 
uh, that a lot of them, Gary just needs to dig deep and get, get, he, man, Exodus has got such the badass catalog, bro. Dude, it's killer. I mean, they, they've got a catalog from 83 to, 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 to current that is just savage, bro, bro, that they need to do some work. And dig and dig some of these deep cuts out, man, that the people want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And Gary oh, knows. Yeah, I you know, I was sober when I met you. And I'm still yeah. sober. I'm sober like 28 years. No, I know that. And when I met you, you were a fucking mess. And I'm not saying it to be disparaging. I'm not, I'm not talking. Because I know that you're sober now. And I know that you've come a long way from there. I want you to know that it, it kind of like, it, like, it, it broke my heart when you didn't show up to the, make the record and you were in such a, a bad way. And I remember, I don't know mm -hmm. if you remember, but I called you and I said, Rick, we're at, we're at Juan's studio, man. We're, we're doing it. And you're like, I I'm on my way, man. I'm on my way. And then you just never, you never showed up. And you, and I, can you talk about how dark things were for you? Yeah, I, I sure can. So. All right. So we did the demo and uh, this is for, uh, this is for tempo, right? No, show that kill machine. Right, right, right. So we had listen. So during the recording of tempo, Gary had just got clean uh, a little while prior to that. Yeah, and I was still using. Yeah. Um, but Gary, I gotta say, Gary Holt, you know, I, I. I my hat's off to the man for it. He never sweated me, dude. Not once. Not once did Gary say, dude, you're a piece of shit. I'm going to fire you from the band if you don't get your shit together. He never said nothing, Rob. He, no. he just, he let, he let, he let, the, he let it take its course. You know what I mean? Um, and it might have been, uh, I was a mess, Rob. You I know. know you we we know. all were, bro, but, but everybody got better and I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I just I fell down the rabbit hole even worse, I think, because I was just so depressed with like I couldn't I couldn't stop, bro. I, I don't know what was up, but well, Rick, um, I want you to know that like so I, I was there and I, I I you know I never you know it, my love for you never wavered. I knew because I was in that same position. I remember there was a time in my life when I could not stop. I could not, it didn't matter how much people loved me, it didn't matter how much people cared, it no didn't doubt. matter what kind of money I was making, what kind of job I had, it, nothing. The only thing that mattered was that drug or that drink, and that's all that mattered. And that feeling is is so Rough. fucking it's overwhelming. Crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. So I was, I mean, to the point where I was, I was going to lose my position in the band I'd been in for over 20 years. Yeah. You know, my, my, my best friends, my life, dude. So yeah, it was dark as fuck, but I, I, I t I've told this to Gary and I've told this to, to uh, Tom, but I don't think they can relate because they've never had to deal with this like you did, Rob. And one day, after spending my life, my giving everything that I had in the whole world to Exodus, one day I woke up and I wasn't in Exodus anymore. And that that morning was like, dude, I can't even describe the emotions that went in. I woke up and I wasn't in Exodus anymore, dude. Yeah. And that fucking it 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 all damn near took me out, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I had to reinvent myself. At 40 plus years old, two kids, two little kids, you know, uh, I ended up moving out of Oakland. Uh, I had to get the fuck out of there, bro, because uh, we were living at the studio. Oh, it was bad. And then we moved in with my wife's mom, and I got a job at the Dollar Tree. And I ended up working there for uh, for like two or three years. In a, I mean, I could go on and on and on. But long story short, I met. Uh, I met a guy who knew who I was and offered me a job on his ranch and the rest is history dude he just taught me a lot of, he taught me how to live my life and make money dude yeah you know what I mean no, it man, that's a, it's a beautiful story when it comes down to the end I know that so you know I also oh, know the feeling of have, having you know being an exodus and then having it be gone and your that identity that part of you is no longer remember I, remember Rob remember when you woke up that, that, that the day that you weren't in exodus you'll never yeah, forget that day. yeah dude I'll never forget that day either you know what I mean and 
you know, it took me a while to get over that. And, and, um, but, you know, so, so when you, when you left, I, I want you to know that like, so here we were, you know, I, I joined the band. It's me, you, it's me, you, Gary, Tom, and then you, you quit and Tom quit at the same time. And it was like, Holy fuck. Like, what did I get myself into? And yeah, I didn't understand, I but I knew that we just got to keep pushing forward and just keep going. And, and uh, so Lee joined the fold and it, and it came, it seemed to be like a, you know, and for me, it was, it was, you know, um, as much as I, I loved you and I always, I, it never faltered. It just was okay. We're, Rick's going to go do his thing and, yeah. and hopefully he, you know, gets better. And then, you know, and then I remember when, uh, when you showed up, when, when I first uh, saw you the time after that and uh, you looked so much better. You had cut your hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had color. Oh, that was at Gary's skin. wedding. Yeah, you had color in your in your skin, and, and yeah. we were laughing, and you were you were. It looked like you were okay in your own skin, and I was like, you know, he's not on drugs, and that's like bonus. I mean, I was like, that's you know, and and uh, you were you were the same person. You just weren't spun out, and it was it was a beautiful <laughs> thing to say. You know, uh, I've never I've never heard anyone either in Exodus or out of Exodus, talk about you in a negative way. Never. Yeah. It, even despite, look, it was always, yeah, Rick is, Rick's got a problem. And, but it was always spoken about with love. It was never spoken about, oh, he's a fucking piece of shit. Fucking, yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. tweaker. No, yeah, nobody yeah. ever said that ever. Gary never said it. And Tom never said it. They just, no, it's really, it, so I hope he gets his shit to go. That was always the, the way that we talked about you. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I remember, I had the, so I'm in the band for like, you know, like 10, like eight years or something. And they said, well, Tom, you know, Gary's like, well, I'm going to go out with Slayer. So what should we do? And I'm like, we should call Rick. That was my first response. Good. And they said, well, he hasn't, he probably hasn't played in a while. I'm like, who cares? Right. <laughs> who fucking gets a fuck. Right. And I remember, I remember Rick, you, we, you came to rehearsals and we were having a blast and I would never forget this, man. I, I don't think I've told this story before. But I was on, I was, uh, I, I was on stage singing and we were playing and we were in Europe because you came on tour to Europe with us. Yeah. All of a sudden, man, I hear someone screaming behind me. <laughs> right. And I was like, I thought something was wrong. So I kind of like turned around and looked and it was you. You were so happy. You were yeah. screaming at your fingers. You're like, yeah, <laughs> motherfucker. And it, dude, I, it, I just, it was like you were, it was infectious, man. It was yeah. infectious to know that you loved it that much. And we had, yeah. I have to say, man, that was one of my favorite tours of my entire life was having, having to spend that time with you and play those gigs with you and play all those fucking killer songs. And, it was and, awesome, Rob. It was yeah. awesome. Hey, remember Sardinia? Oh, yeah, we, fuck yeah, man. Hanging out. Yeah. Do you remember the, you remember the night you, I, I, I have a video of you on my, on my computer somewhere. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. You were dancing. dancing. I found you in the EDM tent at some festival, just, yeah, yeah. and I got you and you were so happy, dude. You were so, inf and it was like, it was, it was infectious to everybody on the bus and it was infectious on stage and it was always a blast, man. It was always fun. And, yeah. and, um, Thank you, you, Rob. You're, you're a beautiful human being and I, and I love you very much. And you're, so I'm doing this podcast. You're my first guest because I, I, yeah, knew yeah. That that uh your your story is a story of 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 like triumph of the human spirit man like you know we yeah. we both you, you were down and now you're back up and you're you're yeah. a good father and you're you're uh, uh, you, you you made your own life and it's and it's uh, i honestly believe that i'm not done playing i mean once my kid gets out of school bro um i got plans i got plans all i need to do is find me a tom honey that's all i need i yeah. need to find me a tom honey yeah good luck with that yeah i know but someone, someone comparable, you know what I'm saying? That that can play the thrash beat, and that's just a great dude, you know. It's yeah. it means so much to have a great human with you creating than someone that you know is a great player, but he's not too cool. You know what I'm saying? Fun to be around. Man, yeah. it means everything, dude. It just it yeah. means it's to me. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so yeah, and and all of it when we were in Europe, bro. You know what tripped me out about you was that um that we were drinking. You know what I mean. Some we we I got a couple a couple of times I got really hammered, uh, and you were there with your fucking Pepsi partying right along with us, dude. 
but straight as a fucking arrow, right? Yeah. And yeah. here's a drunk as a piss poor boy. <laughs> and here's Rob. Yeah, all right. And he's straight sober. I just, I love that, dude. I, I always think about that, bro. Yeah. Oh, I was always like a, I was an instigator. I'd be pouring the shots and shit, but I just yeah, never yeah, yeah, did it yeah. myself, you know? But that's uh, so cool, though, right? Yeah. Well, you know, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't, I never needed that to be who I was. I never needed that to be, to enhance my personality. I, I, I just, and you've learned that you've learned that you don't need it to, to, and, and it doesn't dull the pain anyway. Like the pain no. comes regardless, you know, and that's the, one of the things about being a, a drug addict or a drunk is that, you know, it's just a band aid. And once that band aid comes off, man, that shit hurts. You got to go through it. And I know that you did because it, you couldn't, it, you couldn't come out the other side of it and be who you are if you didn't. Nope. Nope. I mean, I could have easily just ended up dead or in prison. Seriously. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all there is to it. But, you know, I, I got great friends, bro. I got great friends and I got, yeah. I love my kids so much. And uh, so let's talk about, hey, uh, dude, you like the album, bud? Yeah. You? I like it. Um, and the production is fucking insane. The performances are insane. It's tight as fuck. It's, no, wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah. You did a solo on the record. Dude, have you heard it? No. Oh, it's, it's everybody that, well, I'm, it, I hate to toot my own horn, dude, but everybody that's heard it says it's the best solo on the album. It's fucking badass, Rob. I did it in one take, bro. Well, I went in there, sat down, and fucking nailed it in one take. And Gary goes, dude, it's done. I'm like, nah, let me just fix this little piece. So <laughs> it was crazy. Gary was just like, dude, badass. You know what I mean? Now, did you, went, did, did you write it before you got in there, or did you come up with it on the spot? No, no, no. I, I, I had uh, – it was done when I went in there. I, I spent a couple okay. weeks and got something good. You know what I mean? All right, cool. Nice yeah. and tasty fucking – it's badass. Yeah, that's the best way that's to do super, it. Yeah, super proud of it, man. It turned yeah. out good. Yeah, so, the songs are amazing. It's, it's a good album. It's great. It's going to – I think it's going to take Exodus to where they need to be. So let me so, ask you this, man. So yeah. when, when – uh, when when you guys were doing Impact is Imminent, how fucking high were you? Dude. So You don't even remember doing it, you were so fucking high. No, I remember I remember every minute, every day, every second, every note, every Oh, that's word. right, because you were tweaked the fuck out. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I re I, me I remember all of it, dude. So listen, I'll tell you, uh Impact is Imminent, we rented a house up in a place called uh Albion. And we drove to the studio every day into the mountains about about 15 miles, like into the cuts, bro, in yeah. a place called Comchi. Badass little studio. We had uh, Chubba, uh, who did uh, Painkiller. Uh, no, was it Chris Chan? Chris Tangredis. No, did he do Force of Heaven? I can't remember. Um, but anyway, dude, I w w it was so bad to the point where, like, I'd finish my tracks for the day or for the for the for the song and I'd hop in the car and I would drive three hours there and three hours back, bro, to get me and Gary shit. So we could keep doing our thing. Yeah. It got bad. It got bad. bad. Yeah. Yeah. No, bad. man, it doesn't uh it, it it reflects on everything, man. You know, so you know, um, I, you know, becoming, cause I was an East coast guy, like speed and meth weren't a thing, you know, our, well, our drugs cool. were dust and fucking acid. And it was, it was a little different. I mean, um, and, uh, but I was a, you know, I was more of a, a booze guy than anything else. But that being said, I mean, it just, uh, uh, it played such a dramatic role in the, in the West coast scene. Um, Oh dude, it was like, it was all, it wasn't just dust that we're tweaking, dude. It was, uh, the whole thing. Okay, so this is what I. This is how I compare the evolution, the, the beginnings of thrash metal to the environment. Okay, it was meth was as big a part of the thrash scene in the eighties as heroin was for all the old blue note jazz. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. And, but not only was it a part of the scene, but it was. It's what created that vibe of the music. It was. Yeah. 
it was, dude, it was, it was part of the actual music. Yeah. Do you hear me? Yeah. I do. So, I, I totally get it. Yeah. Dude, it's exactly the same thing. Billy Holiday and all these heroin addicts that were creating this blue note. Same with grunge. Uh, you know, we had, a. uh, uh Nirvana, dude. You know all them dudes, those uh, Mother Love Bone. Those dudes were strung out on heroin, bro. But yeah. they they wrote all that shit on heroin. Yeah. So and, and it was we wrote all that shit on speed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So and Pink it, Floyd wrote all that shit on mushrooms and LSD. Dude, that's what I'm saying. And so yeah. did the Dead. The yeah. Dead wrote all that shit on acid. Yeah. So it's it, it follows the criteria of genres that yeah. have like evolved you know what i'm saying yeah so, so now in the in the thrash hard rock speed metal death whatever so drugs have become completely uncool yeah it's like no one wants to work with a dope dope stream you know what i mean and it's not gonna happen you know you no, do it, dope just become, yeah. really good. it becomes unprofessional it becomes a a, a, it's a work not happening. itself yeah people well if it's well and this is the way I look at that. It's like, this is what they mean by selling yourself for rock and roll. So I sold my soul for rock and roll. Okay. So one day you wake up and you make a commitment to the band that I have to spend every waking moment working on this band, rehearsals, songwriting, practice at home, Getting people to practice, it, it becomes more than a full-time job. And nobody's going to hire you because you got you have to go on the road. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is what I, I think that means selling yourself for rock, your soul for rock and roll. It's like you made that commitment one day to yourself, to the band. So you probably ended up moving in with your girlfriend or something because, in, you know, and most of the guys. In money. The, yeah. Yeah. You need, you got to, you got to eat. So it's like, and, and no one's going to hire a dude that can't, that has to leave for a month at a time on the road. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's man. not only that, Rick, you sacrifice relationships with your family, your kids, your, your girlfriend or your wife. Well, that's you, the reason that I haven't started a project. Like I said, my, my oldest just graduated 2020. He's done. He's, he's going to be going moving on. And my youngest is graduating this year. So once that's done, they're they're my my you know, they're done with school. I, I can I want to be there for them to help them along the way. But I can actually like maybe do something now. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't about you. to I wasn't about to fucking leave my kids. Uh, yeah, I know, dude. I'll be your singer though. Well, who do you think I would ask if it ever happened? I know you would. I know I'd be the first phone call. You ain't gonna. You'd I know the, you'd be the first motherfucker. You know that, Rob. <laughs> uh, let me ask you, man. I'm gonna ask you because it, it, this is a selfish question on my part. Do you think yeah. if Bailoff saw me singing his songs, he'd have been fucking proud? Or oh yeah, yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah, because you know what? B listen, Bailoff could look at a dude right in his eyes and know. If he was passionate about metal, Bailoff was was. Listen, listen. Paul wasn't the greatest singer, but he was the most passionate motherfucker about heavy metal there was on the planet, dude. And yeah. that's where that's where I I take pride in in me and Paul were like really really good friends. Yeah, uh, we all were. You know what I mean? But um, I'm not the greatest guitar player in the world, bro. But I, I believe that I'm more passionate than, than nine out of ten of these fools on stage these days. I mean, it's just something about and and the people that, you know, they want to see passion up there, bro. That's what they want to see. They I mean, people can see through all the sweeping arpeggios and the fucking all the crazy shit, but do they they want to see a motherfucker up there sweating and breaking his fucking ass up there? <laughs> you know, I I I I, I believe that. And I think that Paul, so, Paul would have seen you perform those songs, dude, and he would have known, yes, I believe that he would have loved you, Rob. Yeah, good. I want to say that, uh, that yeah. you, may, you may not think you're the, the greatest guitar player, right?
But when I when I turned around that time and you were screaming at your fingers because you were so <laughs> happy to be playing, that was moving to me. It was inspiring to me to enjoy the moment that I was in. And I, yeah. and, and that's uh, what it was. And I'll never forget. I don't know if you remember. Oh, well, you'll remember this. We were on tour of Megadeth. We were at, <clears throat> we were in Chicago. And me, you, and Gary and Jack went to a club after the show. Maybe with Bill Kill, too. We were out with Bill was with us. And we went to this fucking bar. And there was band was playing. And the next thing I know, I'm fucking having a soda. We're enjoying ourselves. We're talking and shit. I turn around. And Rick Hunel is on stage with the Chicago fucking blues band at this bar. And he is up there just shredding. <laughs> and you just played a set with Megadeth, and now you're at this little bar, and you're up on stage, and you played the blues with so much fucking love and passion. And, it, you know, and that's what I, when I listen to your solos, that's what I get out of it. I, I get that, oh, no, he fucking meant this, you know? And uh, so you, you may not be, uh, you know, may not be George Benson, man, but you're a fucking... You know, yeah, that's a good. Yeah, I love George Benson. He's you're slinging bad. some, but you, but you know, if George Benson saw you play, he'd be like, "Yeah, that motherfucker means it." <laughs> he really. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a huge compliment, Rob. Thank you so much. I love you, bro. <clears throat> yeah, man. And uh, so that uh, this this life journey is is really weird, isn't it? It's it's weird how it it. it I, hey, I, I'm gonna be real, dude. I'm 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 fucking happy as hell right now, dude. I work so hard, Rob, and I'm, I'm successful at what I'm doing right now. Uh, I just well, I just lost my parents um a year ago. Uh, yeah, both of them in four months, dude. It was brutal. Sorry about that. But anyway, I was there when I was there when they both took their last breath. Um, I I am in total peace with where they're going. With where you know, I, I'm just they were proud of me, and I love them to death, and that's all that, that's all that mattered. Um, and my my parents, you know, they knew I was going to be all right, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's they deal. saw you at your worst, and then they, you were there for them at the end, and, and they saw yeah. that you would become the man that you were supposed to be, and that's that absolutely the thing, yep, yep, yep. And I and I, I've, I've got peace in that, that's that was awesome, good man, you know, it's yeah. still not easy, but anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm happy, you know, I've got. It's going on. I'm mean, I, thinking about getting out of California, but that's down the way. We'll see. Yeah. Well, if you, you know ever want to get out of California and come down to Arizona, man, I got a room for you. You got a bed and a place to stay and all that. I, I might just do that, dude. So uh, yeah, what's the what's the weather? What's the, what's it's going to be 70 out? degrees in a day and 60 at night for the next six months, dude. It's fucking beautiful here. You know? Wow. I sit outside. I smoke cigars. I drink coffee. I hang out. I listen to fucking Pink Floyd, and I listen to right music. So, oh, you, you know, know, I should have put Pink Floyd on my song list, dude. Well, I know yeah. you got a list of songs. So we're so what I'm going to do is so here's my plan. So I'm going to ask you your favorite songs, and I'm going to make a playlist. So no, 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 the they're end. not my favorite songs. These are these are songs. This is what I did. Okay. Uh, uh, so you told me to make a list. Yes. So I just out of my brain, I just started writing shit down. Right. You know what I mean? So this is this is what came to, to my mind. Okay. Over the, uh, you know, it's not my act. It's not necessarily my favorite, Rob. But we're but, gonna go. We're gonna go one at a time, and we're gonna talk about each one. All right. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. First song. Uh, and, uh, Michael Shanker group into the arena. Okay. So we got Michael Shanker, one of my all-time favorite guitar players, just pen king of the pentatonic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just just a fucking ripper, dude. Uh, boy's got. He could just he just hits notes, bro. He hits notes that good that make you go, God damn, that's fucking beautiful. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do, I do. So next one is uh, Pantera, Cemetery Gates. Um, what are you gonna say? I mean, yeah, I remember the first time I heard that, I was blown away. Fuck, dude. I mean, just Daryl was just like. Yeah. What are, what are you going to say about Daryl? Just it's a tragedy. Insane. You know what totally. I mean? Fuck, man. When he died, bro, I was like, I couldn't even believe it. I was crushed. Yeah. Um, So, uh, Rush 2112 Overture. Yeah. Oh, you know, fuck yeah. So, listen, I... Uh, I listened I to that two days ago. I yeah, listened to I, it two days ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
dude, and it's amazing, right? But, but it has the power. It has the power of bringing those memories from that time back to you. Yeah. And you're just like, dude, I'm living, having a fucking time capsule. Like, going, wow, this is insane. <laughs> right? And the reason yeah. I think I thought about that song is because Primus just played the whole Kings. album, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, over yeah. here in Berkeley. And I was watching it on, on YouTube going, man, those dudes are Primus kicked that ass, bro. Yeah, they nailed that shit. I heard Les actually went to Getty's house and took lessons with him on how to play it. I, you know what? I'm, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he did, dude. No, he did that. Yeah, so that's that's amazing, right? Yeah, it is amazing. Yeah. yeah. yeah hey, yeah. Getty, I'm gonna come over. You're gonna teach me these songs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real quick before we go to the next song, yes, sir. Tell me what your uh, when, what Joe Satriani said to you when you uh, went for a lesson with him. Oh, dude. Okay, so um, my first lesson with Joe Satrioni was my first experience with the electric guitar. I didn't even know how to play a bar chord, bro. <laughs> I, the only reason I went in his door is because Phil Kittner from Laws Rocket and uh, Danny Gill and, and Alex were taking from him. You know, Skolnick from Testament, right? Because hey. they're all Berkeley. We're all Berkeley guys. So I, was, I would go to these house parties and Laws Rocket would play these house parties, dude. And I was just like... Yo, Phil is so badass, dude. I got to learn how to do that, man. So I went and got a guitar and uh, went to went to my first lesson with Joe, dude. And it was tough. He was a hard ass, bro. You know, if you didn't, if you came in and you weren't prepared for your lesson, dude, he would just like, it wasn't easy. He would talk shit. You know what I mean? You know, it was to the point where, like, you just wanted to fucking just cut the fuck out and never come back. <laughs> he was a hard ass dude, really. He was, right. but he was so badass. You know, yeah. after he, I, I only lasted about a year with him, bro. And then, um, and then, uh, and then I, and then I actually, that's when I joined Exodus. I think. Okay. Like a, year, a year and a half after that. So you spent <laughs> a year with, with Satriani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah, yeah. and then joined Exodus. Well, fuck, man. Right yeah. on. Dude. Yeah, it was Good cool. For you. So, um, song four. Judas Priest, Stained Class. Ooh. Right? Yeah. Some of the baddest heavy metal ever written, dude. Yeah. Old school, just tipped in and downing at their prime as far as I'm concerned. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the yeah. production was just insane. Yeah. They left, uh, the, blues, they left the blues behind and went on to, and, and created something new. Yeah. Dude, and, dude I listen to I mean, people like, there's all kinds of people that compare me and Gary to tipped in and downing. And I'm just like, dude. When I listen to KK and Glenn, I'm like, these dudes were just way better than we are, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. It's different times, but no, I it, was a different, it was a different time, different. But you guys were definitely, you guys were definitely doing something that no one else was doing. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. even even as far as like James and Kirk weren't doing anything, they they weren't doing what you guys were doing. Right. You know what I mean? Hell yeah, we did. That was awesome. So go ahead. Merciful fate into the coven. All right. Because uh, uh, that's when when I first joined Exodus, when we went to parties and in there, like in the parking lots before shows, that's the album that was playing. It was either Sabotage or Merciful Fate. Huh. I mean, like nonstop parties, parking lots. It was just off the hook. Um, number six, Metallica Ride the Lightning. Just because it's the album, we're talking the whole album, right? No, I, well, I wrote it down for the song, but yeah, right. the whole album for sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ride uh, the lightning, ride the light. Why was Ride the Lightning your favorite song? Like, it's what just popped in my head when I was okay. making this list. You know All what right. I mean? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, uh, Scorpion sails the Sharon because ooh, he's God, right? Okay. All right, and uh, Van Halen, Ice Cream Man. This is, you know, when I, I <laughs> <laughs> dude, that solo and ice cream man is a savage, bro. Dude, I'll never forget. Let me tell this real quick story. We were we were on the bus, and Lee said that Van that Eddie Van Halen had had the worst vibrato ever, and you were like, "Fuck you!" And we put on <laughs> Van Halen one, and we cranked it, and everyone yeah. was fucking singing along and having a blast. Oh, and 
Lee, Lee was just tortured, but he was, but we were having so much fun. And then what was the song where it comes out? Where it's like, uh, Oh, that's a, the yeah. With the volume knob. Um, I can't remember right now, but yeah, it's on there. It's Dude, a, you, 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 you went like this. You went, it was like, and you were like, <laughs> scratching and me and jack fucking <laughs> fell on the floor we were laughing so fucking hard dude oh i have a picture from it i'll put up that picture it's all of us hanging out and it was just such a good fucking time man but ice cream mm -hmm. man yeah that is a good fucking song good solo good that whole album yeah but good yep. yeah so. i love it with my heart dude that that that, that album changed my life dude. yeah um, for real yeah Change my that killer vibrato. Fuck Lee Altus. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> hey, how could you say Eddie Van Halen has bad vibrato? That's crazy. I know. That's, that's nuts. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, and then the next two, I had to put Exodus in there, dude. So I put uh, Changing the Guard and Within the Walls of Chaos. Okay. That's it. That's it. All right, I'm gonna make a playlist at the end of this podcast. So if you're listening to it, like right, it'll it'll just the songs are just gonna start playing. Okay, right? cool. And Hell then, yeah. um, but uh, if you so if you go to like Instagram or uh, YouTube or whatever, there's actually gonna be a link. You click on it, and it's gonna go to Spotify or Apple, and it's gonna play a playlist, and uh, it'll be like it's, it's gonna be called gonna be Rick's awesome. Unit playlist. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah, man. So yeah. yeah. So hey, when when are you when are you gonna air this after you edit? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to edit it all down, cut out all the fucking crazy shit we said that I we shouldn't. Uh, yeah. yeah that's, that's, it's not that we shouldn't have. It, yeah, listen, whatever. I just don't want to, you know what, man? I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So I don't either at all. No, I don't want to say anything bad. It's just a couple of things you're like, eh, you know, yeah. Right. Uh, between us. Between us, man. Yeah. Right. 100%. 100%. Um, dude, Rick, I yeah. love you very much. You're like a brother. You. Well, absolutely, Rob. Hey, uh, when you come back up here, dude, um, hopefully it's like in the summertime we can take the boat out and just kick it, dude. Um, yeah. wait, but when, when, we, when you show up, please let me know. No, I'm going to – so the reason I didn't last – You're going to bring your bike, dude, or what? No, I flew in, and I rented a car, and I drove and saw my friend Red in Redding, who I haven't seen in like seven years. And he, he had two kids, and I haven't met his kids yet. Uh, the last time I saw his kid was a baby, and, I, and he had one since then. So I went and nice. I saw him, and then I drove down to see Tom, and I saw what he drove to Gary's did, on the way. Did you um, see all the fire damage? Oh, uh, yeah, man, I did. Yeah, it was fucked up, man. Yeah. See that? Yeah. It's fucking bad. It's, yeah. it's bad. Know, so my next trip is I'm going to fly out to Reading um, and then and just uh, and come see you and just hang for like like three or four days. And yeah, yeah, yeah. St come stay with you overnight. We'll fucking have yeah. uh, fire and we'll have breakfast and and hang out. And then I'll uh, go see my other buddy Rob. And then, so yeah, I'm gonna right make on, a little man. trip of it. So good, good. Right yeah, on. I man. can't wait. I can't wait. Hey, uh, when you go out with the boys tonight, tell them I s send my love. I will. And uh, I'll see them in uh, in Oakland. Okay. Yeah. Dude, I love you very much, Rick. Thank it's you for doing my podcast. And uh, dude, it's fucking the blast. It's my pleasure. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. All right, man. I I'll, love I'll you. See you, later. you be good. Peace. Hey, everybody. How you doing? I'm back. Uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Rick Hunol. Ah, uh, fuck, man. He's such a good dude. Anyway, I uh, I had a quick conversation with my friend Kevin Young, guitar tech to. Uh, Exodus and uh, a bunch of other bands, um, but he was my tech for you know years and uh, traveled the world with him. I uh, love this guy a lot. He's got some good stories, and uh, so I'm going to call him from time to time and have him uh, give me a good tour story. And sometimes we might ha might have to admit the names so we don't fucking you know throw people under the bus. Following that will be uh, Rick's playlist. I also mixed in some of my favorite. Uh, Exodus songs that Rick played on uh, so they're going to be kind of sprinkled in there anyway so enjoy uh, Rick's music and uh, I'll see you next time I hear you buddy what's up dude how are you man hey nice shirt nice shirt thank you look at your fucking beard dude <laughs> oh. I'm old dude it's so good to see you so Likewise, good to man. see you
Yeah. Likewise. Oh, man. So, uh, so welcome to my podcast, man. Welcome to the Put Up Your Dukes podcast. So let me introduce you. My, this is my friend Kevin Young. He was a guitar tech for about, uh, I think, say, my, like five years of my time with Exodus. Man. He did many a tour, right? I mean, about that, five Calvin. years maybe? Yeah. Fuck, I don't know. So, don't, make um, think. Don't, don't make me do math, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so Kevin, actually, I met me uh, long before he was a guitar tech. I met him when I first joined the band. He was a friend of Jack's and uh, used to come over to Jack's house all the time. And uh, anyway, uh, always been a lovely human being and uh, one of my favorite people to be on the road with and live in a bus with. Always a good laugh. Always a good time. <laughs> always had your back. You know, um, so I want... Uh, the reason I'm I'm going to uh, rely on you to tell me some tour stories, but I, I figured you, you would have thought about one because you've had a couple of days to think about it. So I want you to go ahead and, and tell a good story for the fans. Well, you know, I, I thought of a couple. Um, the best one would probably be the most recent one. <clears throat> and that was that fucking uh, Battle or the Bay Strikes Back tour, that last one in Europe right as COVID was hitting. Yeah. Uh, the fucking boat ride. I mean, I know it made some media outlets and stuff. You hear about that ferry ride we took where we almost all died? No, I... No, yeah. go ahead and tell it, man. Go ahead. Dude, it was fucking insane. So it's the biggest storm in the North Sea or whatever it is is fucking seen in like a dozen years. And we were taking a ferry from Sweden over to uh, Helsinki, Finland. It's like, a, I don't know. 12, 14 hour ferry ride, something like that. And uh, turns out yeah. that the, the one we got on, our bus got on there because we got on a passenger ferry. So our bus and yeah. trailer got on. What's up, dude? How are you, man? Hey, nice shirt. Nice shirt. Thank you. Look at your fucking beard, dude. <laughs> oh. I'm old. Dude, it's so good to see you. So Likewise, good to man. see you. Yeah. Likewise. Oh, man. So, uh, so welcome to my podcast, man. Welcome to the Put Up Your Dukes podcast. So let me introduce you. My, this is my friend, Kevin Young. He was a guitar tech for about, uh, I think, say, my, like, five years of my time with Exodus. Man. He did many a tour, right? I mean, about that? Five Calvin. years, maybe? Yeah. Fuck, I don't know. So, don't make me um, think. Don't, don't make me do math, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I met me uh, long before he was a guitar tech. I met him when I first joined the band. He was a friend of Jack's and uh, used to come over to Jack's house all the time. And uh, anyway, uh, always been a lovely human being and uh, one of my favorite people to be on the road with and live in a bus with. Always a good laugh. Always a good time. <laughs> always had your back, you know. Um, so I want uh, the reason I'm, I'm going to uh, rely on you to tell me some tour stories. But I, I figured you, you would have thought about one because you've had a couple of days to think about it. So I want you to go ahead and, and tell a good story for the fans. Well, you know, I, I thought of a couple. Um, the best one would probably be the most recent one. <clears throat> and that was that fucking uh, Battle or the Bay Strikes Back tour, that last one in Europe right as COVID was hitting. Yeah. Uh, the fucking boat ride. I mean, I know it made some media outlets and stuff. You hear about that ferry ride we took where we almost all died? No, I... No, yeah. go ahead and tell it, man. Go ahead. Dude, it was fucking insane. So it's the biggest storm in the North Sea or whatever it is, is fucking seen in like a dozen years. And we were taking a ferry from Sweden over to uh, Helsinki, Finland. It's like, a, I don't know. 12, 14 hour ferry ride, something like that. And uh, turns out yeah. that the, the one we got on, our bus got on there because we got on a passenger ferry. So our bus and trailer yeah. got on there. I was, I was with Testament at the time. And uh, we get on the ferry and about two hours into it, man, that boat started rocking. Turns out that was the last ferry they let cross that night because of the storm. Right. But dude, <clears throat> I don't know if you, you remember those big ferry ships. They're like cruise ships, I, man. They're huge. Yeah. Yeah. I took one from, uh, there, there was one that did that. Yeah. One from, uh, we went from uh, England to Ireland and the, in that, um, and headed into the, the cliffs of Dover and the waves were coming over the top yeah. of the boat. And everyone well, it was like that, me. man. Yeah. It was beyond that. Uh, 
I, I've, I got thrown out of my bed, literally onto the ground. Everything in my room was flying around. Every piece of glass shattered. Uh, the furniture was flying, chairs, tables, everything. I ended up leaving my room. Uh, when you went outside, the, <laughs> and this is a huge freaking boat, dude. And the waves us? are crashing all the way over the boat. Um, you couldn't get outside, but you could see outside. And, dude, the galley, all the, all the restaurants and shit were just getting trashed left and right. I mean, total chaos, total destruction. It was intense. It's hard to really explain it. But uh, I was scared shitless. I even called my girl and left her one of those, hey, if I don't make it messages, you know, I love you, all that good stuff. Fuck, it was insane, man. So then we, then we get to uh, Finland, finally. And uh, <clears throat> the, the, Dude, that's fucking, yeah. You know, when you're a testament, the, all of the testament gear travels in a truck because they go full production, lights, audio, all that. We had everything with us. But the, the truck went on a, a cargo ferry instead of the passenger ferry, and they didn't let that ferry cross because the it, storm was too gnarly. It didn't make it. So we ended up showing up yeah. in Finland, and uh, we had no gear, nothing at all, period. Nothing, not even guitars. I think I had some picks of Eric's, that's it. And uh, thank God, you know, it was the, the Bay Strikes Back and Death Angel and Exodus rallied, and fucking we all borrowed gear and such and so forth. And the show went on, and it was killer. Uh, Testament sounded just like it. Testament sounded just like Exodus that night Good. because you know we used all their gear, yeah. and then the media found the media heard that the the, the <laughs> freaking uh, truck didn't make it, so the media starts you know telling everyone that the the truck with all the gear went overboard and sank in the sea and all this shit. <laughs> right. It was a good one. All right, man, that's a good one. All right, well, so I'm gonna call you from time to time and have you do one of these. So uh, uh, next time I call you. We'll do a different story. But before we go, oh, I want to tell my favorite Kevin Young story, right? All right. Oh shit. So oh, God. Kevin, we had a day off. We <laughs> we had a day off. We we had a day off in Los Angeles, right? And uh so uh, <laughs> we we made our bus driver park at uh at Six Flags, right? So me and Kevin are the only cool ones on the bus. We're like, fuck it, let's go to Six Flags, we're gonna ride everything. It was like a fucking Wednesday, too, so the place was fucking empty. So Kevin and me wake up at, like, 9 in the morning. We're 8 in the morning. We're, we're, we're the first ones at the oh, gate. Yeah. We're, like, right there. We get in. Yep. We immediately start riding roller coasters. It fucking – and, and we and rode we them until the, 10 o'clock at night. And we made sure to stand in line longer if we had to so we could get either the front or the back car, you know, because sometimes depending the, on yeah, the roller coaster. Figured, yeah, so we did every roller coaster, like, yeah, we did them all, but we did like the first, we were in the front, we did one ride on the front, and then we did one ride in the back, and we realized that being in the back was better because you didn't see what was coming. Oh, then I find out at the end of the day, around 10 o'clock at night as we're leaving, we're getting on the last roller coaster, and it's this one that you're sitting in, and all of a sudden, jump, it lifts you up, and you're facing toward the ground, and Tom got on it with us, and then he was like, no, nope, can't do it, man. Nope. And, he, and they made nope. him stop the ride so he could get off. <laughs> then I find out, I see, there, we get pictures of it. There's pictures of me and you. We got the, we bought the ones that you see yourself on the roller coaster. And then we oh, get I back to the bus wall. and goes, dude, I've been, uh, and, and Kevin goes, dude, I've been tripping on acid since eight o'clock this morning, man. I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> 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 I had no idea that you are high all fucking day. You never told me. And I thought that was so good. Thanks. Dude, you're you so think you all right that you were. Oh, we had such a good fucking day. Let me put it yeah, this way. That day was so awesome, my <laughs> asshole had smile cramps. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. And well, another, listen, thing, man, we'll... another thing is Thank... Wait, Tom got off the roller coaster yeah. and some 11-year-old girl took a seat and <laughs> crushed it. <laughs> oh, that's right. <true. laughs> Love you, Tom. Uh, Love you to death, dude. Well, Kevin, thank you very much for this. Yeah. Fuck Anytime, dude. I can't Fucking wait for the eight. next one. I got um, a good one lined can, up for next time. Yeah. All right, cool, man. Uh, I love you very much. You're awesome, dude. You're a good buddy. And uh, thank you for doing this. And I'll I'll, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon. We'll do this again soon. Sounds great, brother. All right. Thanks All right, for bud. the invite. Be good, Peace man. Out. Hey, how you guys doing? Thank you for listening. This is Muppet. This is my little baby. My little baby Muppet. Oh, Muppet Baby. Anyway, 
Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. She hates me right now. Um, so, my email, rob at putupyourdukespodcast.com. Email me your suggestions if I fucked anything up. Maybe maybe if you want a, a certain guest, maybe I know them. You know, I'll make a list of it. Uh, any other questions you guys got, just hit me up. We'll fucking have a conversation. And if you're a band and you have a, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, an unreleased demo, it can't be uh, uh, signed. You have to be an unsigned band. Send me your demo. And maybe I'll play it at the end of the podcast. Uh, maybe I'll critique it, tell you it sucks, tell you it's great, something like that. Anyway, um, thank you. And I'll see you. Was there anything else? No. I'll see you guys next week.